Well, alrighty then. Time for Vampire the Masquerade. So, I'm going in totally blind. I actually had the realization, like, I looked at my controller and I was like, do I... Wait, do I need you or not? What, what style of combat does this game have? And I realized I don't actually even know what combat looks like in this game. Like, I don't know if this game is like... A, like a melee... A melee western RPG in the, in the style of like... I, I, I don't... I have no idea. I don't know if this is like Dragon Age territory or Dark Souls territory or, or Deus Ex territory or what. So that's... And I didn't even have that thought until I started up. So, what version am I playing? Because there's a whole goddamn debate and like a, a, a dialogue to have about what even version to play and so on. Uh, there's splits in the audience like... Do you play Malkavian or Malkovian or whatever first? Or do you play anything else first and play them the second time? Or do you, also, do you play... I do have the patch installed that fixes a bunch of stuff, but when you're installing that, there's a question of do you want to do the plus version where they restore a bunch of the content that didn't get finished during development and stuff like that. And there's a big debate about like, you should, you should definitely play without it first, or you should definitely play with it first. And nobody actually, there's no consensus as far as I can tell at all. And it's actually really frustrating to figure it out when you're trying to go in blind. Uh, I'm, I split the difference. I think I'm going to not play the Malkavians, mainly because I don't really... The faction doesn't really specifically stand out to me anyway. Although they sound like they're different enough that it might be interesting for a second playthrough. Much like the Nosferatu will also seem strange enough that they probably alter the play style of the game a bit. And uh, I'm actually going to... I am playing with the plus content. So we're going to do that. I'm going to play with all of the restored content built in, even though it's my first run. Uh, partly because it's the ongoing issue of like, I don't know if I will have a second run in the first place. So holding off on it on a hi because I can hypothetically play the game a second time and experience how different it is with the new content or whatever is kind of wasted if I don't play it again because it's a tough call uh, each time. Uh, every time I choose to play a game again, that's just one more game I, I don't play for the first time because that time, is, that time could be spent playing a new game and instead of playing the same game twice, and I genuinely don't know when I will or won't choose one way or the other, especially for a game I haven't played yet. So that's where, that's the headspace I'm in. I'm making a calculated risk of like, it would be cool to do two playthroughs, one with and without, where you experience how different it is now, but if I never play it a second time, then I'll just never experience any of the new content ever. So, yeah. The world of darkness is a place where the mortal monsters pull the strings of humanity. Violence and despair are common. Blip. Uh, we're done with that. I think for the first part of the loading screen, my recording was black, even though I could see it already. I hope that doesn't happen too much. Uh, this is a this is an older game. I think it's a Source Engine game, but it's a. Uh, I think it's 10, 15 years old. So hopefully, a bunch of problems don't happen, but we'll see. The embrace, the act of transforming a mortal into a vampire. Also, hey, the uh, character creation took a while, so if you want to see it, it'll be in part zero. It'll be its own video, because it took a while. <laughs> I want to show you something. Holy shit, that started fast. Good evening. My fellow kindred, my apologies for disrupting any business or interfering with prior engagements you may have had this evening. It's unfortunate that the affair that gathers us together tonight is a troubling one. We are here because the laws that bind our, our society, the laws that are the fabric of our existence, have been broken. As prince, I am within my rights to grant or deny the kindred of this city the privilege of siring. Many of you have come to me seeking permission, and I have endorsed some of these requests. However, 
The accused that sits before you tonight was not refused permission. Indeed, my permission was never sought at all. They were caught shortly after the embrace of this child. It pains me to announce the sentence, as up to tonight I considered the accused a loyal and upstanding member of our organization. But as some of you may know, the penalty for this transgression is death. Know that I am no more adjudicator than I am a servant to the law that governs us all. Let tonight's proceedings serve as a reminder to our community that we must adhere to the code that binds our society, lest we endanger all of our blood. Forgive me. Let the penalty commence. Which leads to the fate of the ill-begotten progeny. Without a sire, most child are doomed to walk the earth never knowing their place, their responsibility, and most importantly, the laws they must obey. Therefore, I have decided that that... This is bullshit! If Mr. Rodriguez would let me finish, I have decided to let this kindred live. They shall be instructed in the ways of our kind and be granted the same rights. Let no one say I am unsympathetic to the plights and causes of this community. I thank you all for attending these proceedings, and I hope their significance is not lost. Good evening. Those have to be the Nosferatu, right? They look massively different. Also, that sword was the size of a person. Your sire. Tragic. My apologies. But you see, there is a strict code of conduct that all of us must... must... adhere to if we wish to survive. When someone, anyone, breaks these laws, they undermine the well-worn fabric of our centuries-old society. Understand my predicament. Allowing you to live makes me directly responsible for your subsequent behavior. So, what I'm offering is not generosity, but the opportunity to transcend the fate woven by your sire. This is your trial. You will be brought to Santa Monica. There, you will meet an agent by the name of Mercurio. He will provide the details of your labor. I've shown you great clemency. Prove it was more than a wasted gesture, fledgling. Don't come back until you do. Good evening. So do I get to customize my character or like, I guess it just started. <laughs> I'm gonna, let's see, left click to continue, yeah. Mouse to look, WSD to move. You can toggle auto move, there's an auto run. Uh, you have to define the toggle though. View key, so Z changes to first and third person. Camera keys move the camera around. So here's third, ah, ah. What a scene, man, hoo-wee. <laughs> then they just plop you out here like a naked baby in the woods. <laughs> How about that? Ah, look, you know, it's probably a lot for you to take in, so, uh, so uh, why don't you let me show you the ropes? What do you say? Who are you? I'm Jack. What's important is I'm offering help. You make it back from Santa Monica with your hide and we'll trade life stories, okay? Till then, I got about this much time. You in or out? What happened in there? Don't worry, kiddo. You'll adjust. I'd love to explain it all, but time's a wasting. You want some help or what? Okay, I could use the help. All right. Uh, why don't we, uh, step out back here? I like it where I am. At least, I'm out of that theater. Christ, it's stuffy in there, huh? This is much better. 
Now, we ain't got much time, but I figure somebody should fill you in on the bare bones stuff at least, you know. Could save your hide. You look wobbly. You even had a drink yet? A drink of what? Oh, man, we're popping a cherry here. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, you're going to love this. All right, check it out. Blood, it's your new rack of lamb, your new champagne. Blood, your new fucking heroin, kid. <laughs> Get ready, though, because, hey, it's never as sweet as the first time. What do I do? Well, down around the corner there, I saw this human. Poor SOB can't find his car. <laughs> so, what do I, I mean, uh... You go down there, casual-like. You creep up on them, then bury those little fangs and feed. And don't worry if you weren't captain of the wrestling team or something, because it'll come so naturally you think you've done it a thousand times already. Won't he become a vampire then? <laughs> Forget that comic book crap, kid. It don't work that way. Now go for it. Be sure, though, and this is important, so listen up. Be sure not to train them dry, okay? It might be hard to resist, but don't kill them. All right. This is your blood pool. Blood is the fuel for your vampiric prowess, or disciplines. When your blood pool is low, you need to refill it. Humans are an abundant source of blood <laughs> in most areas of the game. One is in the alley around the corner. All right, definitely like an audio stutter happening here and there, or just a few stutters in general. I don't know, it's an old ass game and we're trying to make it work, so it's worth checking. So save, save, start. I mean, I guess it already has names for what the saves are, so I'll just stick with that, so save. All right, I'm gonna quit out. I just have to know. Okay, I'm back. This has been a research intensive start of a game. More so than usual. So, uh, first of all, no, you cannot customize your character's appearance. You pick your clan, and that picks your appearance. Well, you pick your clan and your gender, and that picks your appearance. So, White Boy Dreads is gonna stay, apparently. Uh, I did go back and choose a background, because I hadn't done it the first time. But, oh god, the timeline of these edits is gonna be so confusing, because that's- I'm probably gonna insert that into the character creator video, huh? I guess so. I also fixed the audio stutter problem, I think, because when I replayed the intro, it seemed to be gone now. So that if you experience the audio stutter thing that I was seeing earlier, what you want to do is you want to go into your system manage manager system thing, blah, uh, your processes and everything. You want to right click on Vampire the Masquerade, go to details, and then you want to set the affinity so that it only runs on one core. And then it has, stops having the weird speed problems that seem to be causing that, where the game was hitching every now and then, and it was like the audio was repeating itself and stuttering and having problems, so that's cool. That's some progress. So I, I, uh... If I were to guess, I'm thinking that everybody in that room... They're probably the leaders of the seven clans you can play as in this game, right? And so this guy just is the Gangrel character, I would guess. Based on the fact that, like... They get. They give you this like, like they give you this hairy dude. He's wearing like biker shit, uh, and specifically he was skulking off in the shadows and smoking a cigarette and acting detached and uninterested in what everyone else was doing. And so I'm thinking that he might specifically be uh, the Gangrel character. And then you probably meet a different person in this alleyway based on which character, uh, which faction you chose. I could be wrong though. I'm kind of just guessing that. Is my character getting on all fours and, like, clawing at the air? It's kind of funny, but also silly, because it's like Catwoman, where she was like, I'm a cat now! <laughs> Feeding on humans fills your blood pool. To feed, approach your victim and press the feed button when they're close. It's important that humans do not see you feed on other humans. Once you have begun feeding your victim, you will see the bar appear. This represents your victim's blood pool. You should not- you should stop feeding before emptying this blood pool and killing them. Press feed. To stop feeding. So be careful. If you if you kill them, then you're a murderer. Don't be a murderer. Anyway, I got news for you, buddy. Oh, hungry. He's a hungry boy. Let's not be. Let's not too be too risky here. Oh, I, I filled up just on that. 
Bye. Have a nice day not finding your car. How did you even get in this alley? Why did you think your car was here? Every direction is closed by fences? And he's drunk. He's not even going to remember this. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Hell yeah, you're feeling it. I can see it in your eyes. You're a born-again predator. Feeling that blood bubbling inside you, lifting you up. That's it, kid. That's what it's all about right there. Also, fun little bit of uh, troubleshooting, just a PSA. Some of the people that are playing this for the first time alongside me, if you click, the subtitles go away. I lost my mind trying to figure out how, why that happened because when I was replaying the intro the subtitles went away and I'm like I, I, I'm supposed to have those on when I'm let's playing how do I bring them back clicking did it of all things yeah I don't know why it's weird I don't know how I feel about it but it does feel good alright now you got the blood you're feeling all kick ass feeling better than your best day living but wait it gets better all kindred kindred that's a our word for vampire. All kindred have a few things in common. Things that set them right square above humans on the food chain. Yeah? Like what? Like sharper senses, a body that can take a beating, and if you play your cards right, eternal life. That's no sure bet, but still a chance at immortality is not a bad deal. And that's just for starters. French benefits for joining the club. Oh, the rest of the subtitles just aren't in there, huh? So, I'm going to live forever? Well, you can still be destroyed, but forget the books and the movies. Garlic? It's worthless. A cross? Pfft, shove it right up their ass. <laughs> A steak? Only if it catches you in the heart, and then it just paralyzes you. Running water? Eh, that's no problem. I bathe. Occasionally. Now, a shotgun blast to the head. Oh, that's trouble, boy. Fire? That's real trouble. Sunlight? Well, you catch a sunrise and it's all over, kiddo. Get it? Oh, no, we got a stutter. Maybe I didn't fix it. Uh. Huh. I bathe occasionally. This guy's fun. There's something that stood out to me a moment ago. What did he say? Yeah, a steak if it catches you in the heart. We are. Yeah, that, that rule was already used. We specifically both got impaled immediately, and that was their way of incapacitating us so they could put a, take us to the trial. It's so, like that was what they did there. That's interesting. Oh, I bathe occasionally. Oh, maybe it wasn't scrolling correctly, because there it is. Let's make sure we scroll down, I guess. Okay, now. What the fuck is this? Wow, it's it's going. It's it's going. Look, you get inside here and head upstairs. Meet up with that. See what the ruckus is. I can't hear you over the gunshots. You do that. Meow. Alright. Hey, you're not really you're not even hiding or freaking out about the the nightmare gunshots happening right now. He said go in and see he said go in, right? At the bottom of your screen is the use icon. This icon appears whenever you're able to use an object in front of you. Press E. That's how I talk to... Yeah, you can talk to the guy that way too. The use icon's context sensitive. That is, it will look different depending on the object you can use. In this case, the door that can be opened. So it tells you what you're about to use. It's so loud. <laughs> I mean, it's a gunfight of some sort, which is a very long one. Spacebar jumps. Jump on the boxes against the wall. Yeah. I understand jumping. How high do you... You jump pretty high. There's definitely video... There's video game characters that jump higher, but not really... Not usually people. This is pretty high for a person to jump. Alright. Yeah. It'd be really embarrassing if these boxes weren't full of something that could carry our weight. We would just... It would be less of a platforming and more of a... A thing to land on. Like a... What? What a... The stuff that, uh, the, the low-budget way of catching somebody doing stunt jumps, basically. Your feats are the combinations of your various abilities and attributes. The higher your feats scores, the better you are at the activities they influence. 
Inspection is a feat. It is the combination of perception and investigation. It allows you to see hidden and secret things, for example the lockpick on the crate in front of you. You can find your feats listed on the far right hand of your character sheet. You can pick up certain objects in the world. If you're able to pick, an, uh, pick up an object, you'll see an icon appear for it when you're close enough and the crosshairs in the center of your screen are over it. Use the, press the use key to pick it up. Supposed to be, oh, yeah, so you see, this is my character sheet here. So if you didn't watch the character creator screen, you can pause here to take a nice close look at this stuff. But I already explained it in an intro, so ain't doing that again. Item gains lockpick. If you missed it, it's part zero. It's, there's look in the playlist and all that. Come down here. Stay away from the windows. Oh, it's a Sabat raid. The Sabat. They're, uh. Ah, Christ, I was hoping to spare you this shit till later. Uh, the Sabat. Well, uh, They're mostly mindless, bloodthirsty assholes. That's all you need to know for now, alright? That's why not all factions are playable in this game. Because I think some of the factions, like the uh, Disciples of Set, I think are one of them, are all parts of the Sabbat. Or were the Camarilla, I think it was called? So there's like the there's like the good vampires and the bad vampires. Or if nothing else, there's the, there's the society vampires and the chaos vampires, to be more accurate. Because I don't think any of the vampires are great. So what's up? The Sabbat got wind of the gathering here, so they figured they'd raise a little hell and put a little heat on the new prince. What's the prince a prince of? No time for political rundown. Job one, get out of here alive. Sabbat might be mindless, but they hit like a Mack truck, like raging savages. Nothing a fledgling like you wants to mess with. What am I supposed to do? Shh, shh. Heads up. Back away. The Executioner's Gangrel. Dumb, frenzied Sabat bastards. All right, we gotta have a moose out the back quick. I'll stay and keep a watch out. You get us into the office. The door's around the corner here. That guy just used two of the powers we read about. There was the Insect Swarm and the Spirit Wolves or whatever. Are two of the things we read about in the character creator for a Gangrel in, in the Animalism Tree. Uh... Specifically the one that I was actually less, somewhat less interested in between the three, because Fortitude and the, uh, Pro, Protean, Protean both sound really cool. Uh, so maybe this this guy might not even be Gangrel then. I don't know. I don't. I just imagine there's one character that they probably want to use to introduce me to the faction, but maybe both of them. I don't know. I'm on it. To access your quest log, press the quest log key, L. Quest log contains information about your stuff. It's the it's a quest log. I gotcha. Can't go there. When a door is locked, you'll see the use icon. Lock picking, a combination of dexterity and security, is a feat that helps you un unlock doors. Press U to try to lock pick it. Yeah, I'll, I should be good there. Once you've begun lock picking, you will see this bar. It represents the time you need to pick the lock. If the value of your lock picking feat is equal to or greater than the lock difficulty lock, you'll be able to pick it. So if it's lower than the difficulty lock, you just can't pick it at all. Okay, I was a little worried that it was only going to affect the time, and that it maybe wasn't mandatory for being able to open whatever. Alright, that was a level 1 lock. I have like level 3 or 4 lock picking, I want to say. I guess I can check. 3. Uh... The fuck? How'd you get in here, dude? Do you teleport? What type of vampire are you? There's a takeout menu. Whose place is this? The movement feels a little weird. You kind of skate. There's a slidiness to your movement that I'm not used to yet. Ah, uh, shortcut. Well, nicely done though. Not exactly an angel in life, were you? I know how to handle myself. Cool. Now if you want a lesson on how really not to act, 
take notes from those sabbat assholes. You're a big bad vampire. Yeah, great, congrats. Now keep it to yourself. You go roar and you beat your chest and that's what you can expect. Wait. I've still got that list of people from high school. Why not? Wow. Wow. It's the same reason you don't let humans see you feeding. It's why the wolf doesn't want the sheep to know he's there. It's also why you don't go juggling dumpsters or outrun the 815 from Sacramento. And it's and it's why you didn't know any of this when you woke up this morning. This is a really local game, which is tripping me out. <laughs> ah, I get it. Keep our secret secret and you make things easier on all of us. We're living in the age of cell phone cameras. Fuck ups ain't tolerated. Makes sense enough, right? Well, it ain't a casual thing for a fledgling like you. What do you mean? What could happen? That party back there with the guy in the suit and the Magilla Gorilla? The assholes that put your sire to death? That's the Camarilla. <laughs> they make a tidy business out of enforcing vampire laws like this one. Camarilla, so they're like the vampire good guys? Mm, yeah, I'll tell you what I think some other time maybe. I like to let people form their own opinions. Alright, so what's next? Alright, now don't worry, because I know the area a little. You know what? I'm glad we're in this situation, you and I. It illustrates a point. You gotta utilize your surroundings. Okay, but what does that mean exactly? You do what you gotta do. Theft, destruction of property, breaking and entering. <laughs> These will be the least of your sins before the night's out. So look around here. We gotta get out the back there through that magnetically sealed door. There must be a key someplace. I'll find it. So this is, a, this is like an extended tutorial, it looks like. Area indicator. The icon to the left indicates that you are in a combat area. Combat? Anything goes. Masquerade. Respect the masquerade. Elysium. Vampire neutral ground. No combat or disciplines are allowed except blood buff while lockpicking. That's incredibly specific. You can blood buff if you're lockpicking, but only that one thing. Should you really be lockpicking in vampire ground? It seems like that's against the rules too. Okay, so that's good to know. So when it comes to the idea of can I cut loose? Can I use my, tr my very dangerous powers that will make me get in masquerade trouble? Uh... That corner icon will tell me. If it's a gun, sure. If it's a mask, no. It's funny to me that the thing that symbolizes a gun in this game, uh, symbolizes combat, is just a gun, of all things. Not like vampire fangs or anything like specially related. I guess... I guess if you look at that though, the, the even the Elysium symbol is like... What do you, what do you call that? Oh wait, no, it's actually kind of like the... I don't know the name of that either. I was thinking like the over stylized like graffiti art, but actually that's the that's actually what you that's actually how you draw like the first letter in an overly ornate book. That that one ridiculous first letter, but I don't know what to call that either, so I don't know what to call it either thing. The masquerade in masquerade areas, breaking the masquerade can carry dire consequences, such as the unwanted attention of vampire hunters. After five masquerade violations, your game is over. Damn. Your current number of violations is displayed in the upper right corner of your character sheet. You're, that's it, you're, your game is over, period. Brutal. The Masquerade is the code of secrecy that hides vampire existence from humankind. Violations of the Masquerade will lead to ambush attacks from human vampire hunters and scorn, contempt, or worse from your fellow kindred. If you lose all Masquerade points, you will lose the game. That's brutal for a prolonged RPG game. I wonder if you can get any back? I'm guessing maybe not. Interesting. I do like the idea of like struggling to get along with people because of the animal, like the animal appearance, and then losing my cool due to a uh, a frenzy check, and then getting like vampire hunters coming after me as a result. Like this could manifest in cool ways if the game's made well enough, and I assume it is because people it seems to have a cult following. When you can read a note, you'll see the use icon. Readable notes and blah, 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 blah. That's not use. That, that's just over describing. Password chop shop. All right. Password chop shop. You use a computer. Computers are often helpful in solving quests and they're, they are a computer. Many menus and commands will be used uh, with password protected. 
Hacking, a combination of wits and computer, is a feat that allows you to hack into a password protected items. You'll be prompted to press Control C to attempt your hacking feat. That's some real specific hotkeys. Uh, if you value your hacking feat is equal to or greater than the difficulty of the encryption, you will be successful. To stop using a computer or quit, press Escape. Home menu, available menus, safe. Available commands, help and quit. All right. Uh, control C. No. Type list. Control C did break. Safe. All right. Control C. Am I good at this? I already know the answer, of course, but it's chop shop. But password accepted. Cool. Uh, unlock. Safe doors unlocked. Got it. Home. Help. Yeah, it's just command prompt stuff. Quit. I don't need to hit escape. I can type quit like a adult person. <laughs> when you approach a container, you will see this use icon. Mm, try to lock. Okay, there's a lot of over explaining or re explaining. Automated access. Chop shop key. Okay, so we got the key. Take. Exit. There we go. Now take that key card and head out the back. I'll meet you out in the alley there. I'm gonna check out things from topside. Got it. Press the inventory key to access your inventory. Click on the left or right arrow buttons to change categories. Uh, there's a key ring. Most keys once used will not be needed again are removed. Some doors have magnetic locks and can't be picked open. They must be opened with the appropriate key card. Hello. So we have the wallet with zero. <laughs> Your wallet's empty, baby. You're so broke you can't even afford to pay attention. I'm sorry, did I pick the pothead feet? Keyring. Your keyring also contains these keys. Chop shop key, which is... What? It's a key card. It can't go on a keyring. It would go on my wallet because it's a card. Anyway, the first key in the game is wrong in where it's stored. Lockpick. Tool the trade for lockpicks and burglars. Lockpick is used to push the pins inside of a lock into their correct position until the lock is open. Takes a lot of experience to use these well. Yeah, I bet so. My inventory of melee is punch. Our combat requirement is 1. Damage potential 22. Lethality 8. Feet adjustment 3. Base damage 2. Base damage 2. Damage potential 22. Does that mean I do 2 to... What do these numbers mean? Lethality. I don't know. More stats than I understand. Light clothing. That, that's what I look like. Psychosis 66. Hopefully I can get, look like anything else at some point. Because this is not the best starting costume. But it's what we got. Oh, oh, I've been pushing this chair around. Dude, this game is source engine as fuck. Can I pick this up? Hey, physics. Yeah. That's a collision. Yeah, it's hard to explain, but this game really does feel like it's in the Source Engine. Because it is, but I mean, like, there's a particular feel that Source Engine game have. So if you're not familiar... If you're, uh, if you don't, if you if you haven't played this game, just, just know what I'm talking about. Because you've probably played a Source Engine game and know exactly what I mean. Like, this takes me back to playing Dark Messiah of Might and Magic, the last Source Engine game I played. Because it felt like this. Although, it's, walking didn't feel so, feel so weird. You've been wounded by the Sabbat, which happened off-camera while it was shooting at you. This blue bar represents your current level of health. As you sustain regular damage, it will turn black. If your health is completely depleted, you suffer final death, and your game is over. Your health regenerates over time. When you're feeding, your health regenerates much faster. If your health bar begins to turn yellow, it means you've sustained aggravated damage. Certain hazards, like fire and supernatural attacks, cause aggravated damage. This takes much longer to heal than regular damage. Okay. Oh yeah, it's healing. Look at it go. Oh yeah, there's like a trickly texture to my health bar. It's like moving all the t <clears throat> all the time. Why are there stacked cars in this alleyway? How'd they even get here? Why would they be here? What? Also sofa, but that's just some asshole wanting to get rid of furniture. I get that part. How'd the cars get here though? 
It's just weird. Oh, shift makes you go slower. We're already moving at full speed. Okay. Camera weaves like it tilts when you when you turn. Fucking waste of unlife, these sabat vatos. You get winged? Hey, hey! Look at them potholes. Those will close up soon enough. Better feed though. <laughs> There's someone down the stairs here. It's not the freshest catch, but he'll do. I I definitely know this voice actor. It might be Bender. I'm not sure. Uh, what's the difference? Blood's blood, right? Well, when it comes to feeding, it's quality blood you're looking for, not the quantity. Bums and lowlife don't pack the same punch that a healthy, well-bred human will. Juice bags with a pedigree. That's the good stuff. But you gotta take what you can get. You ever had a PhD, kid? Ooh, that's good stuff. If you say so. Remember what I said, though. Don't kill them. At least not the innocent ones. You're a monster now. Make no mistake. One of the damned and the fallen. You need to hold on to every last shred of humanity you have. Let's say I get a little overzealous. What happens then? An innocent's an innocent. You kill one, even a worthless bum, even by accident, and it's gonna cost you a piece of your own humanity. Bring you closer to that beast you got welling up inside you. The beast. What exactly does that mean? The beast? It's always there. It's waiting to take over. When it does, it's like a wild animal wearing your skin. Desperate, scared, reckless. He'll do anything to survive, and it's you that has to deal with the consequences. So I can't kill anyone. That seems a little, uh, restricting. I, 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 I said innocent humans. If some asshole levels a 12 gauge your way, you drain him, skin him, and bash in his skull. Self preservation is a vital part of humanity, after all. My favorite part, in fact. <laughs> I think I follow. The only way to fight the beast is to keep in touch with your humanity and don't go hungry. It's a fine line. Got it. All right, now go feed. Careful, though. He's going to drain fast. Be back in a minute. He's going to drain fast. Go on. I'll be right here. I definitely know that voice actor from somewhere. Remember, you want to avoid draining your victims. Draining innocent humans will give them a penalty to your humanity. The lower your... Alright, draining is when you finish them off, yeah. Lower your humanity, the closer you will get to the beast. If your humanity gets too low, you begin to lose control of your character. This is known as frenzying and may result in a masquerade violation if you are around humans. But that's where the fun starts, is when I start losing control. Although I don't know how much I have to be careful even... Because I, I kind of want to flirt with that, but I don't want to lose my playthrough, so, I don't know. Cram met the time crab nipple, met. <laughs> jump, 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 jump. Oh, he's going fast. He is going fast. That subtitle was absurd. Not quite as good, huh? Eh, you could do worse. There's some rats down the way. You think I'm kidding? You can survive feeding on animals if you can stomach that kind of thing. <laughs> Worse than a bum's neck? That scarf tasted like old gym socks. Well, give it a try. I'll think about it. There's other things that aren't rats. Rats can be fed upon to gain a single blood point. You will find some rats on the other end of the alley, near the yellow windows. Killing rats has no impact on your humanity score. Humans do not react well when they see live rats being sucked on. But it doesn't necessarily show that you're a vampire. It might just be a, a dangerous lunatic homeless man. It occurs to me I'm already playing a vampire RPG this short after Vampire, or Vampire, or whatever it was called. The, recent, the game that came out in 2018. V-A-M-P-Y-R. But this is supposed to be the good one, because specifically that game was iffy in some ways, or at least it was flawed. It was neat, but flawed. Although, if you want to check that game out, you can use my referral code on, on uh, the Epic Store, and I can get a cut. Because they added the game to the Epic Store, so retroactively I could potentially make some money on that. Haha. Uh -huh. Not all that fun. Hey there. Let's eat a rat. Wow, it just goes. You don't... 
Yeah. Okay, yeah, rats don't survive the process. Can I feed on things that aren't rats? Are other things in here? Are there cats? Wolves? It is the city. <laughs> you rat sucker! <laughs> hey, I don't care what you do, but just so you know, polite vampire society looks down on that kind of thing. They could be polite and pass me the salt for my rat. Keep it down. Got someone around the way here. Just one guy? Not too much of a threat by himself, but you never know if there's more in shouting range. You're gonna have to sneak past. Sneak where? The building across from us with the garage door. There's some double doors on the far side. I'll meet you inside. Just stay low and stick to the shadows. And don't let him see you. I'll do my best. See you in a minute. All right, go. It's time to learn about sneaking. Sneaking, a combination of dexterity and stealth, is a feat that allows you to move around, blah, 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 don't get seen. You must be crouched to sneak. The meter on the left indicates the proximity of your enemies and their chances of detecting you if, you are, if they are looking your way. Green means you're completely safe. Yellow means you might be seen. Red means they will see you if they look in your direction. An enemy's chance of detecting you is directly tied to your sneaking feet. If you are detected, your enemies will often say as much and come to investigate. Well, my sneaking skill is four. My highest thing besides the punchy punch. So we'll see how this goes. Okay. Are there? Is this game saving? Uh, no. Maybe just save periodically, just in case. Oh, sneak is crouch, is control. Yeah, I keep wanting to press C. That's gonna mess with me a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah, there's Mr. Gangle. Oh, it's going up. The meter's going up. Dangerously. Gotta be careful. I just want to sneak over here in the darkness. I'm completely unseeable in this darkness, apparently. Oh, he just blew up. Oh, wait. Uh, I thought he died in that explosion. Did you see me? Deuces. How are you getting around? Keep it quiet. They're inside here. Seems that shovelhead outside just got separated from his pack. He's wounded, too. Go take care of him. Don't worry. He's probably greener than you. What makes you think that? The Sabbat, you see, they don't have the most rigorous training program. In fact, that poor Sod is lucky if he knows he's a vampire. How can that be? Uh, he's probably just turned and beaten over the head. They like to do that, make shock troops, cannon fodder, put him out of his misery. I'll do my best. He is a vampire, so be ready. I'll keep that in mind. See ya. Go get him. Time to learn how combat works. I'm on it. To engage in unarmed combat, you need to equip your fists. <laughs> Alright. I knew it was going to be silly, but that's silly. <laughs> to equip your fists, press the melee weapons key, F1, until your fist icons is highlighted. And then your melee weapon... Uh, until your fist icon is highlighted in your melee weapon inventory list. Then click the left mouse button. Pressing the attack key, default left click, initiates your attack. Your unarmed combat feat is a combination of strength and brawl. It directly affects your success in unarmed combat. There are different attacks depending on what direction you are moving when you initiate your attack. Try different combinations by, of moving and attacking in the upcoming battle. You can also block your enemy's attack by pressing and holding the attack, mo attack mode key, default tab. To put your fists away, press the holster key, H. I mean, I had to do it also in Pathologic. You had to holster your fists, which was hilarious. Okay, so... F1. Fist. That. Do I have to be in third person to punch? Looks like it. And then shift is... Uh, oh, tab. Tab. Is block. That's gonna take some getting used to. I would think to press shift. But I guess that's sneak. 
technically. Can you, do, I have to, do I have to crouch the lockpick? No, they just don't want me to do it. Okay. Am I just going to go right back out and fight him? I guess so. Fuck him up. Oh, he's in a bad shape. He just exploded. Man, I do good punching, evidently. You gain a tire iron to equip this weapon. Press the melee weapon, F1, until the tire iron is blah blah blah. Uh, it's the same as before. This icon indicates the weapon you currently have equipped. Where? Oh, there's an arrow. Okay. Uh, for ranged weapons, there's numbers indicating the current reserve of ammunition. Later in the game, you'll find armor to protect yourself. Equip it in the same way the weapons... Uh, yeah. But that three until the armor is highlighted. Okay. We got a lot of tutorial to get ourselves through. Got him. Well, that's that. Sounds like you got another pack moving in, though. The Saban are going all out. You better head underground. Avoid straight bullets. Sounds like a good strategy. All right, head down into the basement through the grate in there. Keep that tire iron handy. I'll be there in a minute. Now nah, I'm gonna punch people with my super hands. All right, well, this is the beginning. We're not even done with the tutorial yet, but it's been a bit. Uh, see you guys next time. I'm in for the long haul. This should be interesting.